Okay, so the same as when you're drawing any other character, you need to think about what's going on underneath. So your character, if it's if you're adding the clothing, or in this case a helmet, it doesn't really matter. You need to think about what, what's actually underneath there that kind of determines overall shape. Okay, so when you're doing the helmet, the easiest way to think about it is just starting with your character's head shape. Okay, and these are just the warm-up sketches, so again, don't worry about them being too detailed. Okay, so when you've got your face structure, I think everybody here is people who have been doing it for a while, so they know basic head shape and where all the lines go. Okay, so you've got your nose and your mouth and your eyes, okay? So when you're drawing the helmet on top of that, you need to think that this has to fit in underneath the bits that have got the eyes on the helmet need to line up with here, okay? In this particular helmet, there isn't really a nose bit or a, a mouth bit particularly, but as long as you've got the eye bit lined up, that should be enough for you, okay? So it's almost kind of like a, a bucket head shape around the skull. So just follow around the skull and make sure you're covering it all. Okay, so you've got that basic shape and you've got the bits around the eyes. So there's like a visor type shape. Um, I can't really think of the best way to describe it, almost like a, a weird X shape for the the black screen bit of it. Okay, so it comes across almost like a semicircle at the top to follow the curve of the head. Come down at an angle and down at an angle again. So it's kind of an, an excess shape, so it comes back out again at the bottom, but much thinner than it was at the top. Okay, and this area on the mask is kind of solid, so when you've got the cheekbone over here, it kind of mimics it a wee bit on the mask, so it kind of comes down in a cheekbone shape as well. And that's kind of indented into the costume, into the helmet. And you've got a bit at the side where your character's going to have the ear. So in this bit, it, um, it sticks out and it comes all the way down and joins into the, the bottom of the helmet. And I think he's got a wee breather module thing or communicator or something at the bottom. Okay, so those are the kind of the, the basic shapes. So this area here, like I said, it's indented. So you're going to have it coming in a bit and you'll have all your uh, area that's kind of in shadows because it's further in and the earpiece coming around as well yeah, I think there's wee breather bits or something at the bottom there okay so those are the, the basic bits you need to to do it okay and then it's really just a case of choosing the lines you want to keep obviously you guys can draw both sides if you want but these are just our warm-up sketches um, if you want to make it metallic go ahead and make it metallic visor area that would be all shaded in or any kind of reflections you want to add to it. you'll end up with that kind of basic shape, okay? And like I said, just adapt it to be whichever helmet you want. And these are just the warm-ups, so don't worry about it too much. Okay, but you should end up with that kind of basic shape. Okay, the, probably the only other thing to le really remember about the helmet is that when you're drawing it from the side, at least the, the first version of the helmet, so it's got this bit on top here that sticks up 
but it doesn't go all the way around in the same shape. So if you do decide to draw the helmet on your finished one, um, so you've kind of got your basic helmet shape. This kind of goes up and then it goes back and it just kind of finishes in like a wee hook shape. There's a technical term for that shape as well, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so you've got that kind of shape. Oops, I'm going to move that a bit so you can see. What we'll probably do is have a quick wee look at the different bits of the costume as well. So all the armour plating. Um, we're obviously not doing our pose yet, so we'll just look at little bits individually. So what to remember is that on most of the troopers, whichever version you're doing, the like the shoulder, the arm muscles, the forearm, they're all kind of separate pieces and then underneath so that the costume can move there's just like a black leather or black material of some sort. Okay, so the armor stops and starts quite a lot. So on the arm, so if we draw our kind of sketchy arm, you've got a shoulder piece and you've got a piece over the, the biceps so they're very angular tubular shapes and then under there you would have the actual skin and the tight bit on the body. Um, and same with like the elbow pads. Okay, so just remember when you're drawing it in that these aren't going to be on the same level. All these bits will um, stick out separately. I'm obviously not drawing it in proportion just now, it's just to show you the idea. Okay, so these shapes are all separate and underneath each bit, so this is kind of like an exploded thing, underneath each bit you're going to have the actual physical body. Um, I think the back of the glove, so if you've got a fist, sketch a wee fist in, you've got like a padded bit protecting the back of that as well. And again, the glove itself is just black. Okay, so it's just knowing where to stop and start the different bits of the armour. The chest piece and the, the main body bit, you've kind of got like 3D padded up muscle bits and the armour shapes. So you kind of have the, the chest area, and you're going to have the stomach area, and then on the armour, I think it's split into three sections like that. And then you're going to have the belt around it as well, so you would have a separate belt. Okay. And the belt is made up of uh, a line at the top line at the bottom and then in between that there's different bits added onto the belt which is all the buckles and communicators and all those different bits okay so they will just start to bend around the whole shape okay but if you remember there's two lines top and bottom and then just add these bits over the top okay so you would you would end up not seeing the lines behind there Okay, so you wouldn't see the bits behind there, but it's easier to build it up if you just think of the, the shapes that are there behind it. So the top of the leg, again, it's a bit like when we were learning to draw the legs in the first place, just think of cylinder shapes. So I think on the clone troopers, it kind of comes down and makes a triangulary shape. And it's got some ridging on it. And again, in behind here, you would have the actual leg. Okay, so that would, it would be black until it kind of meets these armoured Y fronts, for want of a better term. Okay, then he's got knee pads, so again, they're separate. Uh, and then the bottom of the leg is kind of an, an inverse one of that. So your bottom leg still kind of very tubular because remember these are all metallic shapes so 
they have the human form underneath but they're not exact matches uh, and I think the opposite this one so the triangle's at the top and then it just comes down okay so the things to remember so when you're drawing the helmet just make sure you've thought about the position of the head underneath it especially the eyes and that'll help you line it up a bit when you're doing the other bits of the armour just think about them in separate sections about like when we're constructing basic bodies okay I'm going to pull it back a bit when I do the, the full drawing so you can fit it all in um, so that would be top of the leg, knee pad, shins okay and then the arm so they're all in separate sections okay so remember these are just your warm-up doodles and just have to think a wee bit about the armour shapes but it's essentially just mimicking the main muscle groups in the body and then you've got the material underneath it right okay so think about when you're placing the head the position of it as well okay so if he's we're going to probably put the gun in here so the chances are his head will be looking down the way at an angle like that okay you obviously know your star wars stuff better than me so feel free to draw whichever gun is appropriate um but at this point just just think about the body shape okay so you've got his shoulders either side um he's going to be holding open the base of his body probably first um, so we'll do him probably at a bit of an angle so that it looks a bit more dramatic um, and we'll draw him holding the gun handle maybe over about here and then probably his other hand we're going for a big gun holding it there so the elbow would be like that and your gun size we've got a big one so we're going to have a handle area um, and then draw some big rocky bit at the end because there any guys who actually know the proper gun feel free to draw it i'm just kind of going to make it up based on roughly what i think it looks like okay so you need to kind of hold them hold the a position for both hands um, and then after that you're obviously going to need his legs so you're going to have his hips and we'll have one leg going out here um, and then another leg back the way to balance it a bit okay so something like that so you don't really need much more than that to begin with just get a rough idea of where your bits of the character are going to be um, i don't normally start with the hands but because these ones kind of determine the positions of other things i'll sketch them in a bit more than i would normally at this stage so you're going to have your hand shape on a trigger finger that's like all the, the rest of the fingers will kind of be around the handle of some sort probably still actually thin there but as long as you know roughly where it is and on the other hand you're going to have the fingers grasping the bottom of it because it's a big heavy gun you're going to need to hold it in place okay so once you roughly have these in then you can work out your arm positions a bit better okay so you're going to have this arm going back to the elbow and obviously this one as well and then from there you're going to be going up to the, the shoulder areas this one is going to be hidden by the gun but it still helps if you kind of rough in where it would be and you're going to have the chest area Again, a lot of this is hidden behind the gun. Um, then you're going to have it coming down for the stomach. And you're going to have a area for the belt. Um, top of the legs, we're going to have probably bending back a wee bit. 
an area for the knee. Again, like I said, just keep these really basic shapes just now, because it might be that you decide that you've got a leg in totally the wrong position, or you just want to move things around a wee bit so it's much easier to edit them. Um, if you haven't put anything down too hard or in too much detail at this stage, then once you're reasonably sure of you've got things where you want, that's when to add all your detail, when you're pretty confident that you're not going to move things around any. sticking out of the bottom here. Okay, so that'll be roughly the character pose. Um, which bit? Right, you guys were wanting to draw Bald Martin, weren't you? Um, feel free to draw a helmetless version and stick Bald Martin in there. His neck's going to be roughly there, connecting his shoulders. So we'll just start adding details on the bits that we're reasonably happy with. Like I said, I'm not going to do the full one because you guys can do that once we swap over to Zoom. But we'll get the basics in. So you're going to have a wee gap in here with there's the underneath the armour. And the same in here before it gets to the elbow pad. You're going to see a bit at the top of the arm. And it just means the characters. Joints can all move about rather than having a very stiff robotic figure. Right, we'll put the top of the gun in here. So obviously the bits that are at the front, you can start to add those um, just so that you're not um, getting mixed up with the bits behind it. Once you've got the basics in place you can just jump about a wee bit for that. Okay, I'm just looking at some of the comments and I have no idea what you're talking about. So remember in the armour, uh, it comes up a bit, not as high as real stomach muscles would. Um, but enough to kind of give you the indication of that shape. And then you're going to kind of section that off a wee bit. And think about the belt, and this is where all your pouches and buckles and all the other various bits are going to go on. I'm sure there's probably a pretty standard amount and they've probably all got very similar pouches and buckles. Um, I'm not that sure myself. But as long as it looks like they're kind of covering around the body, that's all you really need to worry about. So little communicator gadgets or whatever you want to add there. Make sure it looks like they're kind of sitting on the strap that goes around them. If anybody's using reference I've got there, like I said, feel free to draw the exact model of the gun, but I'm just going to go with the basic shape of it. I think it's got, I'm not sure if it's got a rotating barrel, but I'm sure it's got strips along it as if it has. And then we'll probably draw, draw it as if it's been used so there's some kind of blast coming out of it. Ok, 
Okay, and that will let us go back in and start adding a bit more of the fingers here that are curled round and grab it onto it. There's probably some kind of scope or something at the bottom as well. So what happens when we draw, draw superheroes every week. I have no idea about any of these costumes because I never draw them. Um, so you're going to have the armour coming back on his forearm. Let's see a wee bit of his elbow, his arm there, and then a shoulder pad. So again, like all the other bits of armour, just think of the basic shapes when we're drawing in the figure. Um, and that's pretty much all the rule is for this character. And I think there's a few design bits on it, but not really anything more than a triangle in most areas. Same with the top of the leg, just think of the basic shapes. I'm going to say the triangle's at the bottom of this one, isn't it? Okay, and then inside there you're going to have the actual body area. Most of a need. So the knee, again, it's got a kind of triangle shape in it. It's pretty much just like a, I don't know, a skateboard type pad. Same as the arms, shoulders. So again, just have the basic tube shapes kind of follow shape that you've drawn in for the your stick man. And just make sure to add the skin areas in between that are covered up with the black material. And I think there's a strap on the foot or is it a little I think maybe little hooks that go over. So we've got the basic bits starting to come together. And the same on this leg. Okay, so you want to make sure that you've got your standard shape in. And then just start to kind of add the any elements that are on the armour shape. Like the triangle. So you want to make sure that these areas sit out over the width that you're drawing the body parts so that it's obvious that they're 3D over the top of it. And so you're going to have another knee pad. Itself behind there, and the same below it. Okay, so again, just do the same, follow the basic shape, make sure you go wider than the width you've done his physical body underneath the armour. Most of the basic bits in there, like I say, you can work on the detailed ones once we get switched over to zoom. I'm going to quickly look up a, a rough head for Bald Martin and we'll stick his head on top. Somebody said they had a good image, I'm not sure. Looking at this dude, what a good image is. They're all distorted. Don't know if they're supposed to be or not. Okay, we'll stick on something random a bit like that. Everybody else can just add the normal helmet like we looked at the beginning. Um, if 
for some weird reason the request last week was to stick this dude's head on it. Right, this guy seems to have a very... I don't know, these are all distorted, it's a bit weird. Probably do some combination caricature, one of them all. So he seems to have a very round head. These ones have all distorted them with quite a huge nose. So I'm not sure this would actually fit on a Stormtrooper helmet. Um, man, this is so weird. This is such a weird thing to ask for. Got some big head, head bits going on as well. So it's almost a bald head. Weird shaped open mouth, but again, all of these seem to have been distorted, so I've no idea what it actually looks like. But essentially, because you've done all the other bits, you can stick any character's head there you want. Okay, so we'll just go with something like that. This seems that's what you strange chaps asked for last week. Okay, and then you guys just kind of go over your final details, refine things, fix any bits that are wrong and needing adjusting, and then we'll look at them all on Zoom. Add your own blast effects for the gun going off. 